starting the oil pan removal process, which begins by dropping subframe and the steering rack. And to start that, we marked a spot on the rack right there, that kind of faint line right there next to the flashlight. We marked it on the actual shaft and that little square bracket deal. So we know where to put it back because this shaft is splined. And if we don't get it back in the same spot, then the steering's gonna be off. So, gotta do that first. So after you mark the steering rack over here is we're going to take out the tie rod, which is a, what size is it? 16. It's a 16 right there. And then you just kind of bang it out with a hammer. Shouldn't be too hard. And then we're going to drain the power steering fluid. We're going to drain the power steering fluid from here. We're going to take these two lines off since they need to come off anyway. And then we're going to be able to drop this whole rack after we get that bolt and that bolt, but we're probably going to leave. I don't know, can you see what bolts I'm talking about? Yeah, that one and that one. And then start working on getting the subframe out. Just to keep these lines straight, kind of for myself, uh, the front line for the rack has the blue tape on it. And the back one is not going to have anything on it. It's also a Chase Bay's kit. Yeah, this is a Chase Bay's kit. So your stuff might look a little different, but should be mostly the same. Mmm, fishing and chemicals <laughs> for the washer. Mmm. I don't think it's in here, dude. And this supposed to have one? I thought the banjo boats all had two washers yeah, on both sides. Yeah, but... What happened to it? I don't know. Found. Yes, sir. Getting the steering shaft off or the the rack out of the shaft the way to do it is we take this bolt out right here that goes through to this clamp deal first uh we earlier in the video i said mark this one up here mark this one you're gonna take it out of this one and then so the spline we just marked it right kind of where this crack in the thing is right here and then you get the bolt out and you want to take a flathead that's not super skinny but it like that's comparison to my finger i guess i don't know you just you don't want to be able to get far enough into this thing to hit the spline but you want to be able to split it open far enough to get the rack out but yeah that's basically what you're going to do is you're going to hit this in there and then you're going to take out the bolts this bolt and then uh, that one right here. And then you just gotta pull it towards the front that way. You can get it out. The rack is out now after we did that guy down there. And then you can see actually on here, this is like keyed for that bolt. You see right, um, right like, you see right there. It's keyed, that's where the bolt goes through. But drain the oil. And now we are gonna start taking off some stuff. We gotta put the uh, crane back on, but oil's drained. So we're not gonna be taking off a pan full of oil. So to be able to drop this hub with the thing, since that's what we're doing, we're dropping hubs off of the coils, we need to take the calipers off. We also need to disconnect. This wire right right there because that goes here so I need to open this and to um, to get those open there are tabs here here and I believe that's yeah just these two so you push in with a flathead there and there and then you can open this up so behind this cover here this is the driver's side behind the driver's side cover there's two this one go to the brake this one is the wheel speed sensor so you're gonna um you can just pop it out 
And then I also popped it out of the thing right here. Just kind of pull it out and come out. Hold on, hold on, I gotta... Sorry, one-handed doing this is not the easiest. There. So I got that out. And then what you have to do is uh, there, you see the little T? You have to push, put a flathead in here and push this tab underneath and push it out. And then they're on both sides. So you can kind of see how I have these kind of under there on both sides. Those clips are kind of under there. So you should be able to just kind of pull this gentleman out. Now it's out. Then I also took off these two 16s that are right on the back side of this. And then I also, I like to um, zip tie my calipers up to something when I'm taking them off and doing brakes or anything because it's just easy way to hold them. Zip ties are strong enough to hold them. So, and that doesn't need to come out because the calipers gonna stay with the car when you drop the subframe. So that should all be good. Then from underneath the car, you're going to get out this bolt, 18. And then there is another one on this side, right there. That's an 18 that holds the uh, coil, bottom of the coil in. And then there is, then there's another one right there. This one right here. That is the other bolt you can get out. You can get these two 18s out of the back side, and then you're gonna take this bolt here, and then this whole hub can come off. Take off the uh, lollipops before you do any of this though, otherwise it'll kind of be wedged in place. But then those two are 17s, so pull those two and then do bottom 18s, bottom of the shock, and then do this 18. And then you can pull it off. Have something to set it down on so you don't um, hurt your ball joints. And I also have um, part of the hub here zip tied to here so it doesn't like flop way over and hurt the ball joint. We have the crane hooked up to the engine so that it's supported when we drop the subframe and we're uh, loosening the 17 mils on the motor mounts on each side looking towards the engine towards the back of the car there are four subframe bolts for the front subframe there's one right there you want to point out the other one cody it's over here the back one it's just directly behind it and it's mirrored on the other side so there's one there right there if you can see that there's another one behind that and she's out we uh there's a three-man job there's a jack man in the center there and then we have these uh, blocks underneath there so we just had two people on either side pick up the um the rotor kick out these blocks and then set them down with the with the jack right i also feel here. really bad for you if you have to do this without a lift still doable Still same steps, I guess. So, uh, good luck if you're doing it yourself. And then, now that the subframe and everything's out of the way here, we can drop the pan. And then there's uh, 10 mil bolts all around the pan. And then you also have to take out this bolt here for the uh, power steering. To pull the pan, at least for the S52, I'm not sure if it's the same for the M52, but this power steering pump will hit right up in here. Oh, there's a finger there. Right up in there when you try to pull it. So you're going to take this bolt out, kind of swing it out of the way. You're going to need the belt off. So yeah, this belt is loose. So. Belt loose, bolt out, swing out of the way, then you can drop the pan. The pan is now out, and we also, 
I also told you way less bolts you need to remove. Uh, you gotta take out your dipstick and then you gotta also take out these two. Um, there's gonna be two torques here and here and there's also gonna be torques e-torques going well, from the bell housing these two are just tens yeah oh, oh those are tens sorry uh these are i think i don't know they're e-torques i think they're e-11s here down over there and there's one over there but found some uh plastic in the uh pickup tube and Cody was just shaking it trying to get it out yeah it's pretty funny to watch Oh, something almost came out.